Israel's military has rescued a hostage who had been held by Hamas since the October 7th attacks. He was 52-year-old Kahid Farhan al-Qadi. He was reunited with his family. He lived in one of the several farming communities attacked last October. The IDF says he was the first hostage rescued so far from Hamas's networks of tunnels. Hamas is still holding about 110 hostages, and it is feared up to a third of those may already be dead. CBS News foreign correspondent MTS Tayeb is in Tel Aviv for us. MTS, always great to see you. Can you walk us through what we know about this rescue mission and the importance of this hostage being freed from Hamas tunnels? Major, good to be with you. Well, here in Israel, the, the rescue of Mr. al Qadi is being described as nothing short of miraculous. But as we find out more details, it's starting to look like it was something of an accident. We understand that Israeli soldiers were essentially looking through a Hamas tunnel, combing for clues or indeed Hamas fighters when they came upon a room in which they found Mr. Qadi, uh, who was by himself and with no guards. They identified who he was, took him to uh, a room outside of this uh, tunnel, which was 25 yards below ground, and he was then put on an Israeli military uh, helicopter and taken to a hospital. Now, we went to that hospital, we met with some members of his family, and they told us uh, that although he'd lost weight, he was still in pretty good condition. Now, to answer your question about how significant this is, the bottom line is this, is that Israel says that it is in the southern part of Gaza in order to destroy Hamas's tunnel network, and the fact that they found a hostage in one of those tunnels goes to show that other hostages, uh, some of those who may still be alive, could potentially be there too. Uh, com competing with sirens is always a live television broadcaster's <laughs> occupational hazard. It is particularly so in Tel Aviv and in the region. MTS, thank you for soldiering on through that so well. Palestinian officials, as you well know, MTS, are reporting a strike in Gaza killed 18, including several children. What more can you tell us? Yeah, we understand that that strike was carried out in the Khan Yunus area of Gaza, which, of course, has been targeted multiple times. Now, our uh, colleague in Gaza has reported that a relatively senior or well-known businessman uh, was apparently killed in that attack. Uh, we don't know whether or not it was targeted or not, but it really just underscores how the death toll in Gaza uh, is only skyrocketing. In fact, over the past four days alone, over 250 Palestinians have been killed in a series of strikes uh, across the Gaza Strip, uh, many of those women and children, and it really just underscores just how dire the situation is and how the violence only seems to be getting worse. And in, the, and in that context, MTAs, we continue to talk about the ceasefire negotiations, but as you just illustrated, the battle continues, the death toll rises. Isn't that kind of where the focus maybe ought to be? Because these ceasefire negotiations seem yeah. to be going on and on and on, and yet day in and day out, hour by hour, the death toll rises. Yeah, the, the battle continues, the death toll rises, and the hostages, at least the vast majority of them, remain in Hamas custody. Uh, we had some hope on Sunday when you had a delegation from Israel, you had a Hamas delegation, you also had uh, the, the CIA director as well as President Biden's most senior Middle East advisor in Cairo along with Egyptian and Qatari mediators. Many had hoped that that would be the day that we would see a breakthrough. We have not seen that breakthrough. Those delegations have largely left. Uh, but the talks are still ongoing, but they're moving very slowly. But as you can imagine, with the rescue of this hostage, many people here in Israel are very firmly of the opinion that the only way to get the rest of the hostages out, around 110 of them that we've been saying, around 30 or so are believed to be dead, that the only way to retrieve them, the only way to rescue them, is for a deal with Hamas, something that the majority of Israelis want and, of course, people in Gaza so desperately want. But it's up to the leaders of Hamas and certainly up to Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. But both sides saying that there are gaps uh, between them, uh, gaps which they still have yet to close. MTS Tayeb, as always, thank you very much. Coming to us from Tel Aviv.